Hi, this is Tom from Genius Gecko, and today I want to tell you about a Jira-based tool for objective-based planning, objective-based management. Why are we going to talk about this today? The answer is simple. There are quite a lot of scientific studies that are showing that if you point people to the right direction, give them a specific goal at the end, but do not describe exactly how to get there, this actually forces people not only to be more to, to have more autonomy, which they want, but also forces them, kind of forces them, to be more creative. So you might fi may find out that there will be new ideas that you completely didn't expect, maybe positively impacting your business in general. So I think that this is the approach definitely worth taking. And that's why I wanted to talk to you about this. Um, this plugin, the OKR board, is a plugin for Jira. Why do you want this to be inside the Jira environment, the, the, the objective management? Why not outside the Jira environment? Because if you have it inside, you can very nicely connect it to your daily tasks, daily Jira issues. Therefore, therefore you will have all the items inside one environment and you will also uh, retain the traceability from the very top to the very bottom or from the bottom to the top, whichever you will um, need at one specific time. So let's take a look at this plugin and I will show you um, all the main features that come with it. Let's first maybe visit the home screen. So this is the screen that you will see um, at the very beginning when you enter the plugin. And this already gives you quite a nice summary of what's going on with your objectives. Um, the first part will show you the progress. Now, in my case, it's not really cool because the, the progress has been done basically in the last few days because this is when I've been playing with the data uh, on my test instance over here. But normally you would see a steadily climbing line if you know, you're steadily realizing those objectives. And this will give you a, a great indicator of where you are in terms of completing the objectives for the current time period. By the way, yes, you can define different time periods for those objectives, and I will show you that very, very soon. Um, the, the, the other part over here of, the, of this home screen is where are my objectives that I am the owner of, uh, which objectives I am the stakeholder on, uh, and how, of, and how are, are they doing? What is the progress of the team that I am the member of as well? Important too. Another thing that I want to mention, since we are here looking at this home screen, is that the, the OKR board also has macros for confluence. So I'm going to switch to my confluence page, um, like just a general page where I've put the macro um, coming from directly from uh, OKR boards in Jira. And as you can see, I more or less see the same data over here. Of course, if I want to, I can switch the time periods to different ones and I will have the different data sets. I can also switch to different people from the team or also switch the workspaces uh, from the ones they have defined in Jira. So uh, a really cool thing that you can also add it inside the Confluence and add it like to your general project um, overview page, portfolio overview page, or general company overview page um, with the objectives assigned to different teams, different groups, for example. All right, but coming back to Jira. Uh, so what can you do in this plugin, essentially? Why is it called OKR in general, right? We're talking about the objectives, but what is OKR? So an OKR, for those of you that don't know, is the objective key result. It's like a, a methodology of managing by objectives that hasn't been invented by, but has been popularized by Google. And Google started using it on a big scale, and they broadly claim that a lot of their su success comes from successfully using the OKRs uh, to help their teams plan their, their work for the, for the near future. Um, and therefore, uh, in, in the years following, the OKR's uh, methodology, so to say, started growing and it's quite popular right now. Um, so what, what is the, the main concept of OKRs? So let me take a look at the objectives they have over here. And I'm going to collapse everything so that for now it's, it's, it's clear. First of all, notice that I have a time interval over here and they are definable. So um, I have them defined by quarters and I'm currently looking at Q4 2022. If I would switch to Q3, you will, you will see that 
I actually disable this one, you will see that I have just one objective for 2020, uh, so sorry, for Q3 2022, uh, but I have a lot more for uh, the last time period that I have defined over here. So um, that's the first thing. The, the second thing is that the first step in your journey of defining the OKRs would be to define those objectives. And you can define several different levels of the objectives. So this is super helpful because you want to be able to define objectives on different levels. Maybe you have an objectives that are like the super general objectives for the whole company. Maybe then you might have the objectives for a specific departments in the company. Maybe then you have teams in those departments. Maybe then you want to have also personal objectives for people uh, that, you, that, uh, that work there, right? So you can have different levels of those objectives. Uh, I think the default one uh, over here is company objectives, group objectives, and personal objectives, but you can define your own. And if I go over here, you will see that I have, I have currently company, department, group, squad, personal, right? So you can define your own, you can add the next level over here. Uh, so that's definitely possible. Coming back to this one. So the big C over here will tell me that this is a company-wide objective. A GR over here will tell me that this is a group objective, right? So as you can see, I have a company objective one and I have three group objectives in my workspace over here that I'm currently looking at. So workspaces are another way of kind of grouping those objectives. And again, in my instance, the workspaces are done per, um, per department. So you have the product, you have marketing, you have support, and you have also a company-wide workspace. I'll be looking at product workspace because this is where I have most of the data. So when you think about the objective itself um, and, and what it is, it's basically what you want to achieve, what you want to, to change to, you know, for the company to be better. So uh, I think the examples that are here are quite sensible. Increase business margins, uh, enter enterprise uh, market with our solution, improve our in-product onboarding, right? These are good names for the objectives. Um, but then in the OKRs, O stands for objectives, but then you have KR. What is a KR? Key result. And a key result, um, let me find one. So if I expand this one, I will find a nice key results over here. And under my company objective, I also have one, actually two, one is hidden. Um, and this is also a good example of the key result. So key result is an answer to the question, how will you know that you've reached the objective? So this is basically how you're going to measure it. And look at this key result. It basically says that to increase my business margins, which is like a parent objective for this key result, I need to increase gross margin from 15% to 20%. That's the goal, generally. And if we complete this, we will be happy and um, we will say that the objective has been finished, has been um, achieved. Um, therefore, I have a nice status over here coming from the numbers that I have here. And the numbers that I have here are basically saying that in percentages, because this is what my objective is, I want to get start from 15 to target 20%, right? And where am I currently? Well, at 19. And this gives me 80% of uh, the progress of this objective. If I would change this to be 20, you can see that immediately it jumps to 100%. So kind of the objective has been completed. If I would say, if I would be like at the beginning of the journey, I would say that it's 15. So the same as starting point, the progress is zero. All right, so this is an example of the key result, but let's dig deeper. What else can happen? Let's collapse this company objective, expand this group objective. And you will see that directly under this group objective, I also have some key results, KR over here, one, two, three of them. But I also have already some very familiar icons, user stories, one, two, three, and an epic. I could also have a task here or even a subtask. So you can see that you can attach your JIRA issues to your objectives, but you can also attach your JIRA issues to key results, which actually makes a little bit more sense because then the ladder is like this. You have objectives, uh, which is what you want to do. We have key, key results, which is um, how will you measure it? How will you know that you got there? And then you have your JIRA issues, which basically tell you what has to be completed to get the key result, therefore to complete the objective, so to say, right? So that's exactly where they are. And if you look at this key result, you can see that it has nested items and I have um, add helpful pop-ups over here. I have create tooltips, 
over here. One of them is a user story, the other one is a subtask, but that's only because uh, I wanted to show that you can attach different issue types over here. Um, it probably doesn't make sense for, for this for this to be to, to be as two different issue types, but that's just for the sake of the example. Uh, so essentially you can nest or attach any kind of Jira issues that you want to your objectives or to your key results. All you have to do is just click plus over here, link an existing Jira issue or create uh, a new Jira issue if you want to. Uh, and, and then if you build your whole hierarchy of objectives, key results, and then Jira issues underlying them, um, you of course get um, this nice traceability from the bottom to the top, uh, which is indicated by the grade over here. So the grade is showing you what is uh, the achievement, the, the, the completion level of your objectives, key results, um, and Jira issues. And of course, it's being aggregated from the children to the top. And for example, let me have a look at something that would make sense. Yeah, for example, this one, right? This key result has 50% of completion because one child is completed. We can see state is done. The other child is not completed. It's still in progress. So therefore, it's showing me 50%. Uh, the same goes, for example, for this company-wide objective, which has um, the, a key result that is not completed at all. But what we don't see, there, there is also another key result that is hidden because it's scheduled for Q3. So that's why it's, it's not showing in a current filter, but it's very nice that we have this indicator showing us that it's hidden and, and we can find it. And that, that the progress of this one is 40%. Therefore, the whole objective is 20% overall. So you can, you can have those nice progresses, progress indicators too. Uh, then you also have people that are assigned to those objectives, responsible for them. On the level of Jira issues, of course, you will also have people uh, that are responsible for those Jira issues. You also have groups, so kind of teams working on those objectives, key results, Jira issues. And again, you can assign or create your own groups, first of all, and then, of course, assign them to different, um, different tasks, objectives, or, or, or object, uh, key results. Um, the status will show you whether the risk, uh, sorry, whether the objective or the key result is on track. Uh, whether it's a little bit behind, whether it's at risk. It's actually calculated from this, uh, this bar over here, and that pop-up actually shows you the predicted score, and it takes the progress of uh, the element itself, and it divides it uh, also by the time progress of the task. So actually, that's a good point. Where is the time progress coming from? Uh, where can we see it? Where, first of all, you have start and end dates over here. Right, so this is the first place where you can see it, but it also has a roadmap. So if you turn on the roadmap, you can actually see how your objectives, your key results, your even singular tasks are placed in time. So we have the objective over here, for example, spreading like that. Uh, we have inside that objective a key result that we know that we are going to be working on somewhere over here. And then we have those two tasks, and this is how they are structured. So you can definitely do um, a roadmap-like planning and visualizing it also in, on the timeline. You can switch between quarters, months, and weeks over here, so kind of zooming in, zooming out to see exactly what's going on. And what I like very much is that you can also change the period mode for those. So for example, if you want to work with manual period mode, which I probably wouldn't because I'm used to the automatic, you can turn on the manual period mode and kind of the parent is not adjusting to the children. But if I would switch now back to uh, out of bottom up, you can see that the key result automatically, automatically extended itself to capture kind of all the children that are underneath it. You will also see that some of my entries are missing still the bars over here because I just didn't place them on, on the roadmap yet. But of course I could do this. So I could do, um, I could click here, put this uh, key result on my roadmap, expand it as far as I need to, and then it will, of course, get the start and end date according to what's been scheduled over here. By the way, the start and end date fields can also be mapped to Jira so that on the level of the Jira issues, if you're using them over here, you will also be able to see that important information. Um, another thing that I really, really like is that when you're defining the key results, look at the last column, current versus target, right? So what's the current progress versus the target where you want to get to? So when you define those key results, um, let, let's do it like this. I'm going to go into 
this objective and I'm going to add a new key result to show you how the screen looks like. So of course you, you put the name but then you have the result type and the result type can be either the percentage or, or the number or a binary yes and no, so completed, not completed, right? So you just define, for example, a percentage and you say that we want, we are currently at 23% and we want to get to 45% and that will basically, so test TR, let's call it like this, that will basically indicate that this is the progress that is going to be happening. And my test key result now, if I go to it, you can see that, okay, we start at 23, currently we are at 23, we want to get to 45. If I would like to have a number, for example, from zero to 100, which is like a default one, then I could also use the number. Uh, if I would just change it to binary, it's complete, incomplete, right? So it gives you lots of possibilities. Oh, one more thing that I want to mention over here is that you can, you can also go like, we want to decrease something, right? Something that is negative. We want to decrease from, for example, 90 to uh, 45, and that will work as well. And if we are currently at um, 80, for example, then my progress is 22 because there is still a long way to 45, if that makes sense, right? And then in this column, current target, you really get this nice uh, indicators showing you that, you know, increased growth margin from 20 to 15%. We are currently at 12, we want to get 15. We are currently at 15, we want to get to 20. We are currently at 80, we want to drop down to 45. We are currently at 190, we want to drop down to 120 when it comes to um, product-related support tickets, right? So this also is a nice touch over here, immediately showing you uh, where you're currently at and where you are actually getting to where you're aiming, what you're aiming at. So all in all, I think that this is a pretty amazing tool for objective-based planning. It will allow you to define the whole tree of objectives with several different levels and you can define your own. It will help you adopt the methodology of objective-based planning more widely in your company um, because it will keep everything in the same place. It will help people um, be informed about what's assigned to them and what's not. It will give you the traceability from the very bottom to the very top. And of course, um, along the way, it will also help you monitor the progress and manage those objectives as you go. Um, definitely something that I recommend taking a look at. Uh, you can download it directly from uh, the Atlassian Marketplace. So go ahead and give it a look. And that is all from me for today. Thank you so much for listening and I'll be seeing you in one of the next videos.